Welcome back, folks, to another episode of What is Rudy Spending His Money On? We got graded cards. We got, don't look at it. I don't want to hurt the thumbs downs. Flesh and Blood Cold Foils. And we got low-end, third-tier level reserve list cards and just old cards. Very, so we got three interesting things to talk about today. What's going on with the old fab? What's going on with Rudy buying some random, just graded cards, I guess? I don't really buy normally graded cards. I prefer raw cards. Because usually the market and the premium sometimes, I just unless it's of course like a PSA 10 or something special. Um, and of course we've got non-English, not very exciting, Phyrexian Devourer. But you got to admit, the artwork's pretty amazing. And more importantly, random, just reserve list, weird Mirage Visions, iconic cards that are very not sought after except by set collectors and evil, evil investors. So, start the video off right in the middle here. So, before we go too far, remember if you're interested in being on the channel or you want to sell your old high-end Magic the Goothering cards or Flesh and Blood sealed boxes of first edition or cold foils of any Flesh and Blood sets, uh, Alpha Investments LLC at gmail.com. Remember, uh, comment sections and WhatsApps and creepy Tinders and all kinds of uh, tumbling Tinder, MySpace and all that stuff is a fraud. You cannot reach me. You will lose your money and your cards. I do not use Facebook or other social media. It's either Patreon Private Message or Alpha Investments llc at gmail.com and the address in the description is the only valid address every other address is a scam okay so let's start off here i normally don't seek out cards like this if it's graded below a nine essentially anything graded in the eights this is treated as no different than just a near mint raw card period because again you can get well look at the rudy with the subgrades we have an eight but we do have one subgrade i'm sorry i can't even see it one subgrade at a nine i, I don't care don't give me no quad triple plus tic-tac-toe doesn't matter to me. I don't care if you're playing backgammon. I don't know. I, it's just, look, it's a near mint to mint card. It's grade eight five. Now, you got a nice little minty, little nine of the old archaeologist. Uh, everybody already knows. I have about 200 copies of the archaeologist. It is one of my favorite cards of all time in Magic's history, so I'm just excited because I just like the card. Uh, again, it's rated a nine, so I pay a little bit over mint pricing. Um, cards like this. You look at a Legends card, the infamous spinal evil Rudy villain. Just iconic. Reserve list. It is Legends. I know it's a three drop one too, but again, it can it can pop out some blue creatures, but it's more importantly, it, it's a just a regular nine. It's not like a gold label gem or anything, but it is reserveless, and you know, it's kind of this isn't something that really gets me too excited on these particular cards. We've got also, now this is interesting, we've got a nice brick of three in the eye of chaos. I'm not really sure what the guys it's a very strange grouping of cards. So 8-5 treated raw, and again, this is a 9-5, so it is usually I pay double, 2 to 3x the buy list, depending on the card and all the details, population reports, blah, blah, blah. And again, a near mint to mint land tax. So was, look at this little letter, though. Look at this. I love magic. I have over 20 years of fond memories. Friends met playing the same. Uh, all right, friends met playing, yeah. However, I found that I really don't care about owning the cards. I'll keep the memories. You keep the cards. Thanks for the purchase, Mike. That's a really... Dude, that's like philosophical. Like, I feel like I just figured out the meaning of life. I'll keep the memories. You can keep the cards. Isn't that interesting? That, I don't know. That really that really got me, Mike. I don't know what it was. The way you hand wrote that said, I just really... I just wanted to share. So, um, I guess maybe he graded these himself. These were cards he played with. Because it's a very... just It's just a strange batch. To have three eyes over here... Then like a, a spinal and a flipping archaeologist with like a, a alpha like it's, what a weird grouping of cards. Maybe these are what he had left over. Maybe I'm not really sure. So all right, next we'll touch on the fab a little bit here. Um, we got a couple cold foils in the fab world. Again, remember I am buying. I have now moved into buying monarch cold foils, commons, any of. It, I don't even care. Absolutely beautiful cards, just stunningly stunning, stunning. Oh my goodness, look at that! Holy crap, that's nice looking. So we got the old Halo common. Probably the really coolest one in the batch here is we got the old Dread over here. Really, really nice little Sith looking majestic. Not mythic, majestic folks. And of course, we've got a nice little uh, common gold on there, but beautiful. Absolutely looks fantastic, man. Really cool card. Uh, kind of my personal thoughts on these is I do expect the Monarch prices to kind of stay pretty stable, maybe slowly drift upwards, but I don't expect any extreme price increases. I don't think Monarch will hit $1,000 a box. In the next, you know, couple weeks, I think it's going to be a slow, steady path upwards over the next couple years. I do think the sealed product is going to get to those endpoints, but it's going to take another 6 to 12, maybe even 15, 18 months 
Um, depending on it's really the funny thing is when you talk about newer games and Monarch and MetaZoo, it's really not about the performance of Monarch anymore. Now that that's over with old news, it's really going to be about the performance of Tales and the performance of future sets, you know, code names, you know, Origins and the other sets. It's going to be more importantly based on what the next two sets going into 2022 and the end of the year, how well the market accepts or rejects them. If the market really is excited about that, it will accelerate those price increases on those cards. I think that's really the most important factor, not really Monarch itself for the print run. Okay, so over here, again, I don't like foreign cards. There's just one foreign card mixed in. All right, so this is a, just a cheap little collection, a couple hundred dollars, nothing really dramatic here. I'm still, I know a lot of people disagree and, you know, thumbs down this and that, but I should flush and blood. Everybody, everybody already thumbs down. I'm not a huge fan. Why is that just asleep? I'm not a huge fan of just Mirage Vision era, random, rare, you know, only buy it because it's reserved list. These type of things, you know, these type of Mirage gold cards and spells and things are only really attractive to a very small subset of evil investors or set collectors. Same thing with Visions, the old Solomons. We got the Legacy over here, and of course, beautiful Enchanter. Love that. Look at the lady with the birds. Very cool looking card. Same thing over here. More visions. Um, now, same thing. When you get over here, you got other. Vi actually, this is an interesting one. Undiscovered Paradise, is, even to my surprise, has actually appreciated quite a bit in the last 24 months. It's actually really, that one really surprised me, actually. Uh, but cards like this, you have some alliances. And again, Homelands, you know, the problem is the sheer volume of bulk and amount of single cards in Homelands floating around in the world is extremely high and you got to be very cautious so these are cards like this don't excite me at all but you know hey it's in the batch whatever uh omen of fire again there's a lot of alliances single bulk and a lot of cards like this in people's alliance single card collections there's not a lot of alliances sealed boxes left there's not a lot of mint conditions sought after like force of will you know lake of the deads and l posts and you know cards like that and you know, helm of obedience you know those are more tough to get in the minty condition uh, same thing, Weatherlight, we've got the Legion of the Hall, beautiful card, you don't really talk about it. look at that, you see all the squirrels, and look at the creepy looking lady with the trees, I mean, excellent artwork on there from Ron, um, again, cards like this, I don't really go out of my way to seek and buy, because these kind of weird tier reserve list set cards are kind of, they're very risky, they have a lot of risk, Pillars from Visions, you got Negator from uh, De uh, Destiny, you got Multani from Legacy, you got Bobble from Saga, you got Gemstone from Weatherlight, you got Excavations, now, this one I've had many people in the last year or so talk about with me about how they've been targeting it. I got to admit, my favorite part of this card is that artwork. Stunningly detailed, beautiful artwork from Liz. Absolutely amazing there. Um, but again, not my favorite card, but it's actually really not a bad card. Um, I, I don't think it's going to go to some crazy price. Same thing. A lot of these, you know, these outposts, the excavations, they're not as good as Lake of the Dead or Keldron Outposts. Those are my favorites. But, you know, Goblin Retruder, Winter's Night Alliances, Alliances. You got a batch of Winter's Nights. These, you know, they have a little bit of value, but again, there's just a lot out there because nobody sought that after them. So bulk bins and mountains of closets of bulk have these cards. Okay, Apocalypse, Tempest, it is reserveless, rare. You know, Revised, Farmstead, it technically, is Farmstead? I'm not sure if Farmstead's reserveless. I think it is. Uh, but again, this isn't a card that's sought after. I actually like the card, uh, but it's really not something that's going to really see a lot of movement or excitement or anything. Again, Visions, City Solitudes, Weather Lights, Vortexes. Got the Claw, the infamous legend from Mirage. This was an old 2017 buyout spec also that came back down, you know, probably retraced 40%, and now it's at new highs again. Exodus Dragon type thing. Oh, we got a couple Exodus Dragons. Three Wishes Visions, very iconic art there. The infamous, um, a lot of people call it kind of the Aladdin princess theme there with the artwork. Ritual again. Uh, I got a little P3K action, the old Tiger. Anything P3K, doesn't, I don't care if it's a common, is a special card. Kind of sleeves, okay. Um, you got the old silly card from Mirage. Mirage, again, Homelands. You got the giant whale guy. Terrible card. It's probably reserve list. Again, Lairs. Uh, Saga over here, Opal Archangel. Love that artwork, though. Absolutely really cool from, who did that, Jeff? Uh, the Inf like I said, a lot of these, a lot of these, again, Visions, Weatherlight, Homelands, Mirage. You got to be real careful on some of these bizarre cards overpaying because they're very risky, especially Homelands and Fallen Empires cards. So again, the, as you can see, these are all going to be your bottom of the barrel, more tier three type reserveless cards. Now, Oath of the Ghoul is pretty good. Now, this card's actually, this one was kind of a nice little touch in this. We got ourselves a nice little, I'm sure it's got oxidation. They all do. Yep, look at the surface here. You got these nice cloudy surface on the black border. 
Um, really cool. I love now seventh edition, eighth edition black water foils are a special thing. Um, but again, a lot of cards like this, these are very weak, very volatile cards that swing with the market. I love Ring of Gix. Hey, Ancestral Knowledge, very cool card. Okay, Thought Lash. Now, that's one of the better ones for alliances. That one is probably more towards, maybe towards the tier two there. But Lotus Veil, vale, great card. Scorched Ruins, great card. Purple Flying Rudy, great card. Sheltered Valley, eh. Hellkite, eh. Eh, Temporal, not, that's a little bit better. Or Urborg, cheap. Purge, again, Keld. Oops. And what was that I dropped? I'm sorry. What was this card? Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. Amulet of Unmaking, infamous Mirage card. Peacekeeper, excellent card. Okay, this is probably one of the better ones from the batch. Like I said, infamous, iconic, that kind of wild African artwork there with the horse in the sunset. Beautiful card. One of my favorite Weatherlight cards of all time. I like the character. I like the way they have the art. I like, like the jewelry, the outfit, the horse with the sunset. Just, man, that rocks it. One of my favorite uh, Weatherlight cards of all time. Great, great card. And by the way, by the way, and I know it has an actual upkeep cost, but man, you know, it's kind of like a moat card, but it has an upkeep and it's a creature. Kind of interesting. Uh, Reverberation actually upticked a little bit recently. Well of Knowledge, again, another one that has a little bit of value. Arabian Nights, even though it's just the witches, again, it's Arabian Nights. It is a, it's a green light in my book. Bargain, always a ridiculous card. And here, we got a couple Legends Gold cards here. Um, cool cards. They've gone up a lot in value, even the buy list, everything on these things. But, you know, these are set collector bizarre cards. I, I don't know. They're, they're, they've always been a funky thing. Citadel Druid. I'm sorry. Citadel Druid, not Sentinel. Citadel Druid, probably one of the best cheap, basic artifact type. I mean, so underrated. How this thing is still... I actually had a video on this a long time ago where I bought out an investor who sold me like 100 Druids. You guys remember that from like 2017, 2018? Uh, still, I can't believe this card's even under 20 bucks. Blows my mind. Canyon, great card. Doppelganger, infamous, even though it's only a revised version. All right, last couple cards here to end the video here. Revised Forks, great cards, great cards. Force of Wills, money in the bank. All right, uh, Mana Web, and of course, Karn, Urza Saga, Silver Gold. This is a reserveless card. This one was reprinted from the Volt Foil specialty version before they closed the loophole of the reserveless promo thing. All right, so in conclusion... I'm sharing this little tiny batch, kind of third tier collection, because there's a few cards I, I reason I went through with it is because there's a few cards I liked, like these right here, the Force of Will, the Karn. There's a few cards mixed in that I did like. You know, the Lotus Veil, the Scorched, uh, I think it's the purple, yeah, the purple guy. You know, but for the most part, most of the ones are kind of like, you know, eh, had to pay a couple dollars for some of these things in here and some of these cheaper ones. You know, it, they weren't exciting, but I felt the overall purchase was worth it. To also have a discussion with everybody and again to remind you all be careful i know it's i know it's stupid and a lot of you guys are gonna make fun of me but it is riskier to buy cards like this than it is to buy like cold foils of first edition i know that's kind of silly a weird comparison but when you're getting some of these very lower tier riskier cards they are there's a lot out there and you don't know who owns a thousand of these bizarre cards and if they've been accumulating them, if the price goes up, if they're going to dump it, you don't know. And there's not a lot of utility and true demand for bizarre items like that. So you got to be a little bit careful, okay? So I hope you all learned something today, as always. Have a splendid day. Make sure you're enjoying your hobbies, you're collecting, you're investing, your family and your life. And remember, don't let the negativity get to you. Walk outside, dig a hole, be a carrot, count to a thousand. Yell at the cars when they go by. Act like an old guy in a chair. You know, there's a lot of amazing things. But you got to pay attention and you have to look in the right direction or you're going to beat yourself up. Have a splendid day, everybody.